My name is Alec Rohlke. Uh, I'm from the University of Virginia. And I'm going to present today my work on implementing the uh, RISC-V in uh, the GEM-5 simulator. Uh, so the uh, increasing complexities of uh, modern designs um, creates a rapidly increasing uh, design space that is uh, difficult to um, explore using RTL simulation. And on top of this, uh, proprietary libraries and architectures um, like x86 or ARM <coughs> uh, impede uh, collaboration between researchers. So a solution to this is the Gen 5 simulator, which is a uh, flexible and open source uh, microarchitecture and memory hierarchy simulator that uses high-level models to uh, address those issues. Now, this is useful for RISC-V hardware development because most uh, RISC-V simulation options um, are either high detail but low speed RTL simulation or high speed but low detail binary translation. And using uh, GEM5's high level models, it is possible to get higher speeds than RTL simulation um, but higher levels of detail than binary translation. Now on top of this, GEM5 also has several features that um, reduce the overhead of simulating workloads. Um, such as the customizable levels of detail um, in its CPU and memory hierarchy models, and um, the existence of uh, system call emulation uh, over full system simulation. And it also has the ability to save and restore um, system states using different CPU models. So you can um, um, warm up your caches using a low detail model and then um, say the system state, and then later resume from there using a high detailed model. <clears throat> now, I brought this functionality to uh, RISC V, um, <clears throat> including the 64 uh, bit uh, base ISA and the standard and compressed extensions, uh, or RV64 uh, IMAFDC or GC. This currently is limited to single threaded execution with system call emulation. Uh, and so it does not have any support for the privileged ISA because in, with system call emulation, typically only user level code is run. And so um, um, privileged code is offloaded to the host system. And today I'm going to be presenting uh, details about the implementation of RISC-V and GEM-5, um, beginning with the integer and multiply instructions, which I grouped together into uh, one um, unit because the multiply extension only adds new operations to existing formats. Um, it doesn't add any new kinds of formats or operands. So most of the instructions in these uh, two modules are based on GEM5's implementation of MIPS. Uh, for example, the fence instruction for RISC-V is similar to MIPS's sync instruction, uh, so the implementation was borrowed from there. Um, the internal behaviors for RISC-V, for the ISA in GEM-5, um, were um, based off of um, those of MIPS and somewhat also from Alpha. <coughs> um, it includes nearly all of the instructions in, in, the, um, in these extensions except for the ERET instruction um, because, as I mentioned earlier, system call emulation doesn't perform um, privileged code on the simulated system, it offloads that to the host system. Um, and so as such, there is never really going to be a return from privileged code uh, during simulation. And additionally, the fence instruction doesn't support the ordering flags that the uh, reference um, specifies because Gen 5 doesn't have this behavior built in yet. <clears throat> now for the atomic instructions, um, at the time that I implemented this, uh, RISC-V followed the uh, release consistency memory model, and I think it still is, has a similar one, um, where a reader who acquires a memory location uh, sees all the changes for writers that have previously released that memory location. And so RISC-V provides uh, load reserved and store conditional instructions and atomic read modifi modify write instructions that can all be marked with uh, acquire or release flags that Gen 5 has built in. Uh, now, a challenge for implementing this module uh, extension was that each uh, atomic 
instruction uh, has two memory transactions, a read and a write, which Gen5 does not support for the most part in a single instruction. So to overcome this, I broke it into uh, two micro ops, uh, one which reads from the um, memory location and stores the, that data into a temporary register that is currently separate from the main register file, and a second micro op which um, performs an operation on the data that was read and then stores the result back into the memory location. Uh, the, so the implement of the, of the floating point um, extensions was fairly straightforward, uh, except that the uh, x86 machine that I used to develop this um, adhered to an older floating point standard than RISC-V does, um, which was uh, in some cases not an issue, but that machine uh, does not have all of the rounding modes that the floating point standard that RISC-V uses specifies for when uh, an exact results are computed. Um, specifically, uh, the development machine is missing the, the mode where the inexact result is rounded away from zero. <coughs> uh, this, this, these two uh, extensions were verified against um, Spike and against a hardware rocket chip um, simulator compiled with uh, Chisel and Verilator. And this verification mostly focused on the production of invalid comp uh, computation results like NAN, Infinity, and Zero, and on the throwing of floating point exceptions. The uh, final uh, extension that Gen5 currently supports is the compressed extension, which introduces um, half-length instructions, two bytes instead of four. Uh, and before adding this extension, the decoder was uh, fairly simple. All it had to do is advance the PC by four bytes and uh, fetch, those, fetch the four bytes and then decode them. But with the introduction of half-length instructions, uh, now a more complicated state machine has to be uh, added in order to account for the fact that not all instructions are going to be aligned on a four-byte boundary. And that it's possible that a full-length instruction might start um, halfway between two four-byte boundaries and end halfway between the next two. Uh, but the biggest challenge here was actually interfacing with Gem5's built-in decoding logic to make sure that um, this new decoder is compatible with all of the existing CPU models that Gem5 has. Um, and so now I'm going to show just a quick uh, demonstration of using Gem5 in a simulation flow to get power um, and temperature results for an SOC uh, design. Uh, so it begins with me choosing a state to uh, load and then running Gem5 using its detailed um, out of order model, um, which produces these, these results, uh, which you can see here. Um, and these statistics are input into a power simulator um, which produces power results uh, and area results uh, that we can use in a temperature simulation to create this uh, heat map of the design. Um, and I should just like to note that Gen5 and all these tools actually run a lot slower than this. I had to uh, cut a lot of waiting out to make it run this fast, or appear to run this fast. Um, now, as I said, Gen5 uh, only has limited support for RISC-V. Right now, it only supports uh, single-threaded execution with system call emulation. Um, so there's a lot of work left to do until we can say that Gen5 fully supports RISC-V. The two main milestones are um, support for multi-threaded workloads with system call emulation, which requires either um, the support of a uh, special library that Gen5 uses called M5 Threads, which uh, it requires for all of its ISAs to use to run multi-threaded workloads in system call, system call emulation or for Gem5 to support pthreads for all of its uh, ISAs. And there is some work being done on that now at uh, Cornell. Um, the other milestone is uh, support for full system mode, um, which I'm planning to add uh, soon. Um, and that requires in the implementation of the privileged ISA as well as the creation of a kernel and a boot image that is compatible with Gem5. Um, other minor things to correct are, uh, as I mentioned, uh, floating point rounding mode, for example. But they're not as important as the other two. Uh, so just to summarize, um, 
I pre presented details about uh, my implementation of RISC-V and Gem-V, um, and I presented a uh, roadmap for uh, full support for RISC-V. Uh, what is available now um, is available as part of the main Gem5 release at gem5.org. Um, and if, if any of you are interested in contributing, um, just come find me or send me an email and we can uh, talk about it. Um, so thank you for listening to my presentation. <laughs>